Okay, so here's the thing. I personally don't like inking. No disrespect to people who do, I just don't. I love pencils and I love the way they look. But the thing is, you finish your pencil on a piece of paper, you scan it into Photoshop, and then you have to edit it all over so you can actually color it. Or you can ink it and just make your life a little bit easier. But pencils are a beautiful thing, they're loose, they're, they have this feeling to them that I always want to keep. So when you put them in Photoshop and you want to color them, you either damage your pencils with different processes so you can color them or you ink them, or you can try my method. It's a very easy, very simple method. And what we're going to do is we're going to separate the pencil from the background, from the paper background, without any loss of quality. It's still going to look like a nice, loose, very dynamic pencil without any loss of quality, but we're not going to have the paper background. We're just going to have the pencil. It's a very simple method, but it's very useful so you can color your pencils in Photoshop. So now that we're done with the drawing, let's scan it in and fire up Photoshop. So once we're done coloring our image, there's a few things we can do before, you know, just editing the pencil. I'm going to import the image here into Photoshop. And well, the first thing we can do, of course, is rotate the image. We go from image, image rotation, and there I'm going to just select what I want. In this case, I'm just going to rotate it counterclockwise, nothing special. And now, before we look at the method I'm going to teach you, there's several things we can do. You can always grab your brush, in this case I have this brush, and give it the multiply option right here in the brush. And that way, whatever your color is just going to go, you know, use the multiply option. That might work. Or you can just grab the background of the pencil here, right click, duplicate, or just press Ctrl J. And then place that one, well, we need to first make this background white, so we'll do that. And then you can just set that one to multiply. And yeah, sure, you can color underneath it with any color you want. And that should work just as well. You know, any color you want. I'll set this brush to normal. Now that could work. The problem here is that you don't have a lot of control over the pencil itself. The pencil itself is always going to be the same color. It's not really going to uh, allow you to color different parts of the pencil or manipulate it in any way. So, you know, I don't really like that method all too much. It's just not practical to me. Now, the method I'm going to teach you is a little different. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make some adjustments to the pencil. Now, this is not necessarily a part of the process. You can just leave the pencil as it is right here, but you might want to edit it a little bit. Maybe the pencil is a little bit too light. Maybe the pencil is a little bit too dark. Keep in mind, however, that if it's too light or too dark, you may end up not being able to adjust it. And maybe what you need to do is either improve your penciling methods or improve your scanning methods. But for now, we can just go with curves. So we're going to come to Image, Adjustments, Curves. Or you can just press, uh, let me make that smaller. You can just press Control oops, plus M. There we go. So let's go and adjust the curves. Image, Adjustments, Curves. Oops, went with the wrong one. Image, Adjustments, Curves. Okay, here we go. So here from curves, we can make the dark parts darker and the light parts lighter. Now, if you start manipulating it too much and it just gets too messed up, you don't necessarily have to close the window and open it again. Here, where it says cancel, if you press Alt, the Alt key, it becomes a reset button. So you can just do that and start over again. A lot of times it might take more than one pass for you to reach exactly what you wanted. In this case, I want a strong pencil, and I think that's pretty much good. Okay, now having that, what we need to make sure is that this image has no color information. So we need to basically desaturate the image, eliminate all color information. Now we can do that by just going to Image, Adjustments, Desaturate. 
or we can press shift plus control plus U and that will desaturate the image. See here, image adjustments, desaturate or that one. And as you can see, it's a subtle change, but you can see that the image now has no color information. Great, that's what we need. Now what we need to do is open channels. I have it open right here, but you can identify it by, you know, the little icon that looks kind of, uh, okay, whatever it looks like. It's, it's three circles there. Now we can go there, and if you don't have it around here anywhere, you can just come here to Window, Channels, and there you go. Now see, here I have my layers, and here I have my channels. Now we're going to come to the RGB channel, and of course you should have this in RGB. If you don't have it in RGB, well it means you're scanning in CMYK, that's kind of weird. But anyway, if you don't have it there, you can always come to Image Mode, turn it to RGB. Now you come here to RGB, and look what's going to happen with the mouse pointer when I press, let me just label it here, when I press Control plus Click. Oops. Okay, look what's going to happen. I'm going to come here to RGB and I'm going to press Control. See how the pointer changes? It becomes a selection tool. And if I press click there, see it makes a selection. Now before we continue, you might notice that certain parts don't appear as selected. Now this is because Photoshop basically judges how dark what you're selecting is, and if there's any sort of transparency to it. If it's less than 50%, it doesn't show the selection. But that doesn't mean that it's not making a selection. So when you click here, and it gives you the selection, but it, you can see here that the ear doesn't seem to be selected or anything like that, don't worry. It doesn't mean it didn't select it. It just means that Photoshop doesn't think it's dark enough to show the selection. Now here, what Photoshop is, did was that it selected the white part. So we need to invert that selection. We come here to select and give it inverse. The shortcut would be shift, wait, shift plus control plus I. That will invert the selection. Now let's do it again. RGB, control click, invert the selection. Great. Now I'm going to come here to my layers and create a new one. And I'm going to disappear the layer where I have the pencil. As you can see, there is the selection. And all I need to do is to fill it with whatever color I choose. In this case, I have black. Now to fill it, I'm just going to press Alt Backspace. And there you go. And then I remove the selection. Control D or come to select, deselect. Now the way I did that was I filled with Alt plus backspace. And in order to remove the selection, I went with Control plus D. Okay? And as you can see, I have that here in the separate layer I made. Now, Here's the one I had, and here's the new one without the background. As you can see, without the background, over a transparency, it looks kind of weird. But once you put the background there, you can see that the image is just the same. Now, the original one right here, I can eliminate that. And leave just this one, which doesn't have a background. Now that's going to be useful in several ways, and one of the basic ways it's going to be useful, I can close channels here now, open my colors, is that I can just color underneath it with no problem. See? It has absolutely no white information. So I don't have to use multiply or anything like that. As you can see, the pencil layer, which I'm going to label, and that's actually a very good idea, has, oh, let's label it correct has absolutely no multiply or anything like that. It's just, oops, sorry. It's just the pencils on top of the colors. And as you can see, I can color it freely. But it has other advantages as well. 
One of them is that I can grab my pencil layer and now I can make it any color I want. Now, how do I do that? As you can see, I can edit the pencil layer and ruin it as much as I want. But I can come here to these options right on top of the layers and press this one, the one that looks like a square. This one is called Lock Transparent Pixels. Now what that one does is that it makes it so when I paint, only the pixels that have information are gonna be affected. So in this case, I can grab any color I want and with that, oops, sorry, I have an eraser tool. Okay, now I have my brush. And with that, it's only gonna paint pixels that have information. That way, I can make my pencils any color I want. Very easily. I can variate colors, go from one color to another. And that way I'm no longer limited to having my pencils always be of a certain color or of a certain darkness or anything like that. No, I can make my background any color I want. And as you can see, it'll give me a nice kind of a, you know, it's kind of nice to not have my pencils always be just like gray or something like that. I can actually make them a nice dark brown in this case. It kind of gives my pencils a very kind of loose, natural feel to them. You can, of course, make them darker in certain parts that I think they should be. Or I can make them lighter in certain parts, see? Now, of course, that doesn't look good, but you get the point. Go from one color to another. So it's going to make, it's going to give me a lot of control over what I can do with my pencils. And of course, I can always just come here and color underneath it all. See? So I'm going to have a very nice, loose, scanned pencil that I can use in many ways. And hopefully it, it'll change a little bit the way you see the pencils that you scan. In this case, I'm going to just lower the opacity here. And I can start working with that right underneath the pencils. It's going to give me some very nice options. It's going to open a little bit the possibilities of what I can do actually with a pencil. See? And suddenly, uh, you know, a quickly scanned pencil can become a very nice image. Okay, but we didn't come here to see me color, at least not today. We're going to have a class about coloring later on. So for now, that's pretty much all you need to know about these kind of pencils. Of course, let's look into some other sort of pencil techniques. But for now, I hope this one is clear enough. Now I'm just playing around with it a little bit. kind of difficult to stop once you've uh, gotten a little bit of momentum going. Anyway, yeah. No, kind of looks like Yoda. Not sure I like that. I mean, I like Yoda, but I didn't want the character to look like him. Anyway, okay. Let's move on. All right, so we're done separating the pencil from the paper, and that went pretty well. But then comes, okay, what happens if you want a clean pencil? You know, you don't want to ink it, but you want to keep it clean. So what I do is I use a red pencil. As you can see me right here in the video, I use a red pencil for my sketching 
and then I draw with a pencil over it. It's a very simple, very effective method for sketching, and I love it because the red pencil, it, it's, it's got a much smoother glide over the piece of paper uh, than a regular pencil does. So for sketching, it's awesome because you just kind of glide over the paper and it's very loose and it feels very dynamic. It feels great. Now, this is only gonna work with a red pencil or a blue one. And depending on where you are, you can get actual pencils especially made for this at your local, uh, um, I don't know, art supply store. Now, if you don't have one, or at least a good one like where I live, then you can just grab a red pencil. They sell these for all sorts of things. I, I think accountants use them for a bunch of stuff. These are very, very cheap and they're awesome to sketch with. So once we're done doing this, we can scan that into Photoshop and I'll show you how to just get rid of that red pencil as if it were never there. Now, when we've got an image that we sketched out with a red pencil, the procedure becomes a little bit different, but from a certain point on, it becomes exactly the same. Now, here we have that image. We just imported it to Photoshop. And as you can see, it was done with a red pencil sketch underneath. Very useful, very practical, also very easy to get rid of. So what we need to do is very, very simple. All we gotta do is we're gonna open again channels. Again, if you don't have it there, you can just come to window channels. And here's what we're gonna do. Very simple. Just come to the red channel in this case. If you have a blue pencil, you go to the blue channel. Red channel, and we select it and see what happens to the red trace. It disappears. Now, of course, we can't use that just like that because we only have the red channel activated. And eventually, in order to keep on working with the image, we have to activate the RGB channel. And as you can see, the red comes back. So what we're gonna do is, again, we're gonna go to the red channel. And here's what we need to do. Just copy this onto your layers. So we can either like just Go Control A or select All, and we're going to copy by pressing Control C. And that's it. We activate all the channels again, remove the selection, come here to Layers, and we press Control V. And there we go. We pasted it on top of the background that had the red. We can eliminate that, and now we have it without the red sketch as if it never happened. And from here, all we have to do is edit again so we can separate the pencil from the background. And there you have it, a very simple method of separating pencils. I'm finishing the video with this sped up video of me coloring the goblin from the first part of the tutorial. I kind of wasn't happy with how it was going in that first part, so I decided to kind of finish it off and I don't know, I kind of liked the look on his face. Anyway, Thank you for watching my video. Like I said at the beginning, I hope I'm getting better at making these. Uh, I, I tried a little bit, uh, I tried some things different, of course, and I'm trying to make the videos a little bit shorter. Now, of course, if you like these and if you're learning from them, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, or any of that social stuff that you can do with YouTube videos. And if you want to support these tutorials and would like to help me, continue making them, well, don't forget there's going to be a link to the Patreon that you can always check out. You can also check out my website, theministryofabnormality.com, where I do commission art, upload, uh, you know, my work and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something today, and feel free to ask any questions you might have in the comments. I'll try to get to them and answer them as soon as I can. I guess that's it for now. I don't really have much more to say it's it's almost over yeah it's it's pretty much over uh yeah okay great thanks